All right, what's up? We've got a really brief one here. One fight. This is war number three against TCN. And uh, I'm just going to kind of break down this fight, who we used, uh, whether I think that this placement was good, this defender is good, and all kinds of different stuff. So, um, okay, we're just going to kind of scour the map here. But again, I, I just have the one fight this war. So um, I will be taxiing one of my comrades uh, throughout the war. So we'll be sharing a path in both sections, but he'll be taking all of those path fights. And then the fight that I'm taking is Wong on Node 51, which is the Conflictor uh, and Combat Deja Vu Prowess node. Um, so I'm going to be using Apocalypse, and uh, you know, obviously, since uh, that is my only fight with Apocalypse, I will need the Cable Synergy to uh, to start that fight with Four Genetic Code. And then I'm bringing in my white magneto just to kind of hop, help along the way with uh, some guidance placement. So the first order action is just placing guidance on this Mordo. We sent a Penny Parker here. Um, I think it's decent placement for Mordo, uh, but it's hard countered uh, with guidance and you know a double immune champ. So um, yeah, Penny just completely destroyed him. And um, and so here you guys are seeing that everything is cleared already. So I'm just going to walk all the way up to the long fight. And then I am going to pause it here for just a minute and just explain very briefly the basic mechanics of how he works as a defender and why he's placed here. Um, because I do think that it's a, a pretty smart placement. I just think that Apocalypse hard counters. It. So, all right, let's take a pause here. So... Wong really just has a couple mechanics to worry about as a defender. Um, he cycles through mandalas kind of like the control boxes of Psycho Man. He has three of them, and whichever one he's in, they're color-coded, allows him to cast different spells based on uh, different things that happen in the fight. What really matters as a defender is, um, throughout the fight, as you hit him, um, and over time, he is gaining... Um, mystical energy and um, they're little passives and they stack up to a hundred and once he gets to a hundred um, that allows him to do certain things now the real big thing is that if he charges a heavy attack um, then he will gain power based on how much energy uh, mystical energy he has stored up um, and he can gain up to 175 percent of a bar of power so so essentially he can gain one and three quarters bars of power with one heavy if he's at max mystical energy. And um, and then he also can go uh, passively unstoppable while he's you know charging his heavy, that kind of thing. So uh, he, he can be pretty tricky, all right? Um, now, the other thing about him is um, he has this unique ability called Sacrifice for Your Sanctum, where he is... Uh, if he dies and he has at least a bar of power, then the attacker that killed him, that attacker's next uh, defender or next opponent is going to start the fight with a power gain buff and with a fury buff worth, I believe, 35% attack, uh, which is pretty pretty strong. So if you place Wong in front of um, a you know a power gain node like node 54. Um, then, you know, if, if an alliance tries to use the same attacker for both fights, uh, then that second fight could get a little bit dicey or it could surprise the attacker. Uh, now, I know that I've talked through this entire fight, but, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, Apocalypse obviously just completely bypasses all of that, so it just doesn't matter. With Apocalypse, you can land clean parries. And obviously the reason that he would be placed on Conflictor is without Guidance or Apocalypse, Really, the only way to play him is stun immune. And if you're playing him stun immune, then you're getting your openings from him charging his heavy, which is giving him bars of power and unstoppable. So uh, it's good placement for him if Apocalypse was banned. And um, and again, you know, you can you can also bypass Conflictor with a guidance. So uh, Apocalypse just completely gets around him. There is one note on the map that I think that he could be absolutely nightmarish for uh, requiring two bands, and I'm obviously not going to say where that node is or what those bands are. I think that people that understand how Wong works can probably figure it out, um, but uh, he would be a fight that might 
not have an existing counter at the moment. And he could do some real damage, especially with the um, Sacrifice for Your Sanctum mechanic, uh, essentially ruling out that that attacker uh, for the follow-up fight. So anyway, that is it, guys. I hope you enjoyed. I know that this was kind of a weird one, um, but uh, leave a like and a comment if you want to. And uh, let me know if you guys like Wong, and if you do, if you're placing him on defense and where. Um, that is it. See you in the next video.